I work with School Food Focus. We are a national collaborative that works with large districts across the country, leveraging their knowledge and their procurement power to help make school meals more healthful, more regionally sourced, and more sustainably produced. I've been working for probably more than 20 years, although Joan has been working for more than 40 years, trying to change the way we eat. And I want to share with you first three core beliefs that I have developed. Um, one is that it's all connected. It is absolutely all connected, from the subatomic level to the intergalactic level. It's all the same stuff. It's all the same particles. And we are all connected people to people, people to the land, as Cheryl was talking about. And the economic and environmental and social justice work that we all do is integrally connected. It's all connected. Second, I believe truly that we have the power we need to make the kinds of social changes we want. We just have to use it wisely for collective impact. And third, I think the Beatles had it right. I think love is all there is. And I'll come back to that later. Back in 1946, the US Congress passed the first National School Lunch Act. And it was done as a measure of national security to safeguard the health and well-being of the nation's children, which is a very laudable goal. And yet, I would bet that most people in this country do not see school food that way today. So what happened? A lot of things happened, but in the main, school food reflects the food system as a whole. And in the six decades since the National School Lunch Act was first passed, almost everything has changed about our food system, as we've heard from other speakers. We've gone from whole, recognizable foods to highly processed, packaged, shelf-stable, junk food. And the same kind of thing has happened in schools, too, where cooking facilities have been deliberately defunded for three decades. Now, you can try cooking a healthful, wholesome meal with whole foods with box cutters and can openers and warming trays. It's not all that easy. We also just heard about the increase in advertising for junk food, portion sizes, all of those things have contributed to the change in the food system. We've also had 60 years of public policy that's been capitalized on by ever larger corporations intent on exactly what corporations do, maximizing the short-term return to their investors. But we've had six decades of essentially cheap food policy. Uh, and now some of the cheapest foods on the market are the most unhealthy. The problem is, this was all done in the name of ending hunger. But hunger hasn't ended. It continues in good times and bad, and that's because cheap food does not solve the underlying causes of inequity and injustice. And cheap food doesn't help if the food makes you fat or sick or both. So the mainstream food system's broken, so is school food. And the price that we're paying at the cash register, as we all know, does not reflect the environmental, economic, and social costs. And it certainly doesn't reflect the price that our kids are paying. So we're in a situation right now where one in every three children in America is obese. And if we don't change what they eat and soon, they are going to be the first generation of Americans to have shorter lives than their parents. So I want to be very clear, school food is by no means the only factor. We have to look at what's being served at home and what's being consumed outside of the home especially. But school food is an important and crucial factor, and it's essential that school food promote health because we have tens of millions of kids every day who are getting their lunch and their breakfast from school lunch and breakfast programs. Doesn't even include the after-school snacks. So not only are they getting that food at school, we're also paying as taxpayers nearly $13 billion a year for school food. So again, it's essential that that food be healthful. How's the money being spent? Well, for the average school lunch across the nation, school food service directors have about a dollar to spend on the food, which is absolutely not a reasonable task if healthy kids and healthy economies and a healthy planet are anywhere at all in our value system. And yet school food service professionals are doing it every single day in an incredibly underfunded, overregulated bureaucracy. And some of those school food service directors are even making significant improvements in their food against all odds and working in a system where the bonds between farming and food and health have been completely severed. 
So we can look at these kind of numbers and we can see overwhelming need and incredibly inadequate funding and insurmountable challenges. Or we can look at these same numbers and see power. And it's the power of public procurement. It's the purchasing power of thousands of school districts across the country buying food every day to put on public plates, school kids' plates, day after day, year after year. So if it's all connected, how do we reconnect the dots? And how do we leverage all of that power to create the vision, to make it come true, the vision of healthy, well-fed kids who are able to live and to laugh and to learn? Well, for me, I'm going to start by naming some of the sources of power, starting with the power of peaches. There's just nothing that beats really fresh, appealing, life-affirming food. And Bob Bloomer, who's the regional vice president of Chartwell's Thompson uh, for Chicago Public Schools, wanted to get fresh Michigan peaches into his schools. And he had cafeteria managers who were rightfully saying, they're not going to eat it, they're not going to like it, they're not going to like the texture, they're not going to like the skin, look at all that fuzz. You know, and these kids have literally never seen a fresh peach. They have no connection with food, much less farming. And yet, the most amazing thing ever happened. The kids actually ate the peaches and they loved them. And Bob says, you know, we take it so for granted until we see a kid who's never had the opportunity to do it eat and love a real ripe peach. And so for me, the power of peaches is twofold. It's the impact directly on the kids, and it's the impact on Bob Bloomer. And when he writes down that question why, if you ever ask him why he does his work, it is all about the kids. It's all about the kids for Bob. So, we've also got the power of peers. This is a nice little chorus line outside the Central Commissary at St. Paul Public Schools. And Gene Romney and Jim Grosskopf with St. Paul Public Schools were part of the first focus learning lab. And they made significant improvements in the purchase of local produce, in negotiating lower sugar in their flavored milks, in getting whole grain products into their cafeterias, and getting cleaner label chicken. And what they did with all of that knowledge was to share it, to share their experiences, to share their trial and order, to share their specifications and their bid language with all of their peers all over the country. And that inspired Kim Much, for one, in Milwaukee to try things out herself. She changed her milk with the specs that Jim Grosskopf gave her, and now she's uh, using a sweet potato, carrot, and parsnip vegetable blend that was inspired by St. Paul. And what it mainly did was help her understand that school food service professionals are not in competition with each other. And so now she feels comfortable calling her peers, asking for help, asking for recommendations, asking for recipes, asking for all kinds of stuff, and no one has ever said no to her. So, the power of peers. We're back to Chicago Public Schools and Bob Bloomer. He wanted to get fresh fruits and vegetables to the kids year-round. Anyone know anything about the growing season in Chicago? <laughs> it's like this big. So he decided the best way to do that is get fresh frozen. So in this school year, the Chicago public schools are spending $2.3 million for fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables from farms that are within 150 miles of Chicago. And the fresh flash frozen is frozen within 24 hours of harvest. So that's a model for um, peers across the country. In addition to peers, you've got partnerships and the tremendous strength that's to be found in cross-sector partnerships. So you've got school food service folks talking with nonprofits, talking with academics, talking with farmers, with food manufacturers across the supply chain, and most importantly, perhaps, speaking with government officials from federal, state, and local levels. Um, just had to throw in one little slide about the power of fun and the chicken dance, especially when you're wearing chicken hats. It's very important. And then we've got the power of persuasion. Not all districts are actually sold on getting salad bars. They see hassle, food safety issues, and problems instead of potential. But Rodney Taylor at Riverside Unified School District has spent $1.4 million in the past three years offering locally sourced fruits and vegetables in salad bars throughout his district, some of that coming from school gardens. Um, USDA representatives visited because they wanted to learn from him and pass that model on to others, and now Rodney's on the USDA blog, he's on the First Lady's blog, he's all over the place. So, persistent persuasion works. It works to get better products into schools at prices they can afford, even with the minuscule budgets that we give them. 
Another piece we work on is the power of perception because we're basically trying to shift the sense of what's possible and shift the perception of what real food is and to shift the perception of what's possible in public school cafeterias. The one other piece of power I don't want to neglect, Ken Cook talked about earlier, is the power of public policy. And we have been sold a bill of goods for a lot of decades in this country that government can't work, government's no good, the best government is small government. I don't believe it. I believe that government can and must work, and the only thing that will make it work is informed, active citizens. We made a lot of progress in the 2008 Farm Bill with cross-sectoral coalitions of folks from sustainable ag, from the environment, from anti-hunger and public health. It resulted in real programs that are helping to expand options for school districts all over the country, and we've got to do the same in the 2012 Farm Bill. So what we need to do now is take all of those sources of power and many more and leverage them together to shift food systems towards health. We're leveraging procurement power across school districts and we're leveraging public and private market forces to get kids the real good food they deserve. And it's all brought together by the power of the public plate. And I think we're now at a point in the good food movement where we need to and actually can work at a much larger scale, with entire systems, with entire regions, with very large institutions, and with large, medium, and small-scale players across the supply chain. And I see schools as the ultimate public institution for health-focused food system change, because they're dealing with the undeniable public interest in children's health. What brings it all together? in my mind, is the power of love. It's what makes it all work, and it's love for what we do, it's love for the kids, it's love for each other, it's love. And I believe, to the core of my being, that school food can be the driving force of positive change, not just in a few cutting-edge districts, but across the board, across the country. We have the power, and we share the vision, and we need to apply that to create the world we want to live in, and everyone has a role to play. So here's my charge to you. I want you to embrace the vision, the vision of enlightened institutional purchasing that's at the heart of ending hunger and obesity and diet-related disease. The vision of school food as an integral part of children's health, of life, learning, and the pursuit of happiness. I want you to get involved and find your place and begin connecting the school food dots, because they're out there. And use your power to work with school food service folks as real partners. And most of all, I want you to work from your passion and work from love. And since music is one of my passions, I'm going to leave you with a little snippet of a slightly revised song. I believe the children are our future. Feed them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how it ought to be. Thank you.